Welcome, climbers. It is so great to see you all here this afternoon for the highest peak, uh, building effective teams. Thanks so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, my name is Andy Hughes, and I am one of your facilitators, and I'm joined with two other facilitators who I'd just like to say, uh, if you wouldn't mind saying hello. Paul, would you like to say? Everyone, that? my name is Paul Miller. I serve as the director of the GLC. Great to have you here today. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby Minzer. I am a sophomore and I'm a leadership mentor at the GLC. Wonderful. And we're going to get right into things by just taking a few quick polls. So I'm going to turn it over to Abby to um, just ask a few, few questions. And while she's gearing that up, I just did want to remind everyone that uh, we are recording this session, um, just so that you know that. Um, and then also we will um, be using breakout sessions as well as the chat. So, um, you know, please, uh, when we go into breakout sessions, please enable your video when we do that. Um, if you do have questions throughout the session, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and um, ask us a question or put that directly into the chat. But Abby, you have a couple questions for us. Let's let's start there. Yeah. So the first question that I have for everyone is: Have you ever thought about climbing Mount Everest before? Just a couple people left to answer. waiting for one more person. A few more seconds if that last person wants to answer. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and share the results. Okay. So it looks like we have a pretty even split between people who've thought about climbing Mount Everest before, people who haven't, and a lot of people who are maybe kind of like me who've thought about it but then said, no, that's, that's something I'd like to do, but maybe not realistic. But with this program, it will become realistic. We're all going to try to climb Mount Everest. All right, and the next question that I have for everyone is, what's the tallest thing that you've ever actually climbed before? And, you know, if you haven't climbed anything that's mountainous, we've got the first option, but curious to see everyone's answers. Okay, looks like everyone answered. So there are a decent amount of people here with us who have climbed some mountains of decent height. So I'm very curious as to what you guys have climbed before. Um, if you do feel like sharing in the chat while you're talking about why you're here, feel free. Um, oh, there are the results for that. So everyone can see. But yeah, awesome. Thanks for participating, guys. Um, and if you haven't answered Paul's question in the chat yet, please do. Well, thanks for those questions there, Abby. I think that's really interesting. We have such a wide mix of both interests in the pursuit of climbing Everest, but also um, a lot of different scales in terms of what we have climbed, so that's phenomenal. Uh, but what I want to do is just do some more extended introductions of our facilitators so you know who you are about to go on this journey with uh, over the next two weeks. 
and um, we're asking you for what your why is. So we wanted to share a little bit of context of this program and why we chose to, to lead this journey with you. So my name is Andy Hughes. I serve as the executive director uh, for the GLC. Um, I must disclose I am not a climber myself, but um, have certainly enjoyed the majesty of Everest from afar by watching a lot of documentaries and um, certainly uh, reading uh, a few books behind it. There's, there's a great book, if you haven't uh, heard of it already, it's called Into, Th Into Thin Air by John Krakow. It's a really interesting uh, story of just the dangers and the perils of ascending to Everest. Uh, but my core why for this program is I do a lot of my work in teams and I talk to a lot of alums who have graduated from Gettysburg and as they go out into the world, a lot of work, no matter what organization you are in, is done within small group settings. And at Gettysburg, you have great education. You, you may do a few um, study groups or group projects in class, but very rarely do you get taught how to engage, build and lead teams. And so when we thought about offering a J-turn program, we thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could offer an interactive way to give some experience for students to practice working with teams, but also give you some training and some tips for how to do that. And so that's really my why is to, to provide this experience. Um, my main association with teams comes from uh, growing up and playing uh, what I call football or, or soccer in America. Um, I've played uh, football all my life. And that's really where I, for the first time, understood the power of teams and how it helped uh, to, to get the best out of me as well. So I'm excited for you to have this opportunity to get connected with a team um, and also uh, get to, to learn a little bit about the, the skills involved as well. So um, I'll ask both uh, Abby and Paul just to share a little bit about themselves as well. Abby, how about you? Sure. Um, so I also have kind of a lot of experience working with teams, especially with the Garthway Leadership Center, um, preparing the leadership certificate program that we offer to students. Um, I've had a lot of teamwork experience working there that I've really enjoyed and learned a lot about working at, in teams as I've, as I've been working in teams. Um, and also with a ton of extracurriculars at Gettysburg, I am a co-captain of mock trial. So I have a lot of teamwork experience there in a more competitive setting that's kind of similar to um, trying to climb Mount Everest, got that kind of end goal in mind that's very specific. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed all of the teamwork experiences that I've had. I also helped Andy and Paul test out the simulation when we were first considering this program. Um, and that was a really, really great experience of kind of working in a team and trying to figure out how to meet that end goal. Um, and so I really had fun with that simulation. And I was really, really interested in creating a whole program around that simulation and figuring out how we can best prepare you guys to do that simulation and get the most out of it so that you can continue to be involved in effective teams at Gettysburg and afterwards. Thanks, Abby. And again, my name is Paul. Um, I come to this simulation having worked with groups for about 20 years. Uh, and I recently had to calculate how many hours I've been in front of and worked with teams and groups to help them best perform. Um, and it's over 10,000. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm an expert, uh, it just means I've spent a lot of time watching the challenges of being individuals in a group context, trying to uh, achieve something great. A lot of that time has actually been spent in the wilderness environment, and some of that's been on the side of mountains. Um, a part of my role at Gettysburg is supporting in the experiential ed program, or GRAB, um, and that's where we actually take folks outside into cold, high, um, dry places and ask them to make tough decisions. The why uh, for this, this facilitation team in this scenario is uh, that that's not very accessible right now. Um, but the Everest simulation and this course um, is highly uh, accessible. So um, I was excited to be able to provide um, some of the same experience, some of the same challenge that we experience uh, embodied uh, in a snowy, cold place uh, on our screens. So I'm excited to uh, support this simulation for you and give you a taste of what it's like to make tough decisions in tough environments. Thanks so much, Abby and Paul. What I want to do now is just give a, a quick overview of the program so you have a good sense of the journey that we're about to undertake. 
Um, and then after that, um, we are going to um, introduce some preliminary teams that uh, we have assigned you to. Now, uh, we'll mention this again, but just want to note that we are still determining who is here today and who um, is still interested in the program. So we may need to do some shifts, but we're going to talk a little bit about the teams that you're assigned with um, in a moment. Let me go ahead and share my screen here, and then I will uh, kind of walk you through some of the basics of what we're going to be doing over the next uh, two weeks here. All good teams start off with core principles. And so as a large group here, I wanted to make sure uh, that we had a clear sense of what are some of the principles that's going to guide our experience. First and foremost, I mean, you are not in class right now. And so you are uh, in your winter break. We want to make sure this is an enjoyable experience. And we're probably going to be talking more this session than any other session. So thanks for bearing with us before we get into some of the activities. But I want to recognize that we're all learners too. So this is the first time Gettysburg is doing a J-term just like this. And it's also the first time we have hosted this program. So Paul, Abby, and I are learners with you to experience this, uh, this particular program. But what's also underneath that principle is this idea that uh, we all come from a sense of humility, that we all have something to learn, uh, we all have something to teach. And so we're looking for this group to be a community of learners that we can learn a lot from. And the way that we learn is through sharing our ideas and uh, certainly our perspectives. So we hope that all of you are able to, to voice your perspective, but also listen deeply to others. I also want to recognize that uh, with virtual learning, we now have a lot of experience with that at Gettysburg. It does get messy. So if you can uh, embrace that messiness, uh, give, give us uh, the benefit of the doubt as we facilitate the session, uh, but also give each other the benefit of the doubt as uh, most likely something's not going to go according to plan. And finally, just to be present. I mean, that's so important in this time that, you know, we're all talking to a screen right now, and it's, it's not the same thing as, as being in the same room, but there's still a way that we can, can be present and be a part of this experience. So we ask that you do that. That, that means, you know, showing up on time, uh, being an active participant in the breakouts, participating in the chat, um, and also, you know, turning on your camera when you need to. So those are the guiding principles. I did want to ask uh, if anyone has any other guiding principles that they would like to suggest for this, uh, this program as we move forward. Is there anything that's missing on this list that you want, want to be part of this experience? Feel free to unmute yourself or, or post it in the chat. Okay. Let me talk a little bit about our purpose because all effective teams also have a keen sense of purpose. So by the end of this program, we hope that you have uh, some knowledge and some skills to be able to learn how to interact, build, and lead teams. We're also going to talk about decision making and how that's an important part of uh, ultimately the virtual simulation that we'll do, uh, but also on an individual level as well. And then we're also going to talk about the role of decision making when it comes to performance and how different information enables us to make different decisions and that will affect how we, we work as a team. And then finally, we want to make sure that you have uh, the ability to uh, identify ways to apply these lessons that we learn in these sessions beyond just the J-term experience. So how are we going to get there? So we're going to do a number of things that make up the pedagogy of this program. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time in breakouts, in discussions with your team. Uh, we're also going to present and explore ideas of what effective teamwork is. And we're going to incorporate some of the, the most emergent research on that. You'll spend some time individually reflection, reflecting, um, whether that's on the call or in between sessions. And then we're in session two, we're going to invite some Gettysburg alumni who have some great experience with teams to share their story. The program is really built around session three, which is our virtual simulation. And that will be uh, the primary experiential learning that we'll do here virtually. And then of course, we won't spend as much time in the, in the large group here, but there will be some times where we'll do some reflecting and some discussion. 
So that is a, um, a quick overview, uh, certainly of the program. And um, just want to ask if there's any questions before, uh, before we get into some of the teams here. Great, well, um, what I'd um, like to actually suggest now is um, for folks to do an individual reflection. And uh, I think what we need to do now is we're gonna do a, a little bit of shifting with the, with the breakout rooms. And before we go into breakout rooms, we wanna give you some time individually to think about um, one, one core question. And um, that is, what does success look like for you in this program? Okay, so take um, about, about five minutes or so to take out a piece of pen and a paper. And um, what I want you to do is just jot down some notes. When you think about why you're in this program, uh, you think about the, the simulation, you think about the, the being connected with your team. Uh, what is it that success means to you? And feel free if you want to uh, disable your video and uh, uh, take, a, take a while to um, just answer that question. So uh, the time I have is 4.23. So let's have about five minutes and then um, we'll come back at about 4.28. Does that sound good? Great. Thanks everyone. Uh, sorry, um, is it just like one core value? Sorry, I was busy writing down my team members' names. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gabe. Um, you know, you, you can't certainly write one core value, but what is, um, how would you describe your personal definition of success? So oh, personal definition. Oh, yeah, I remember. Sorry, thanks. You got it. Okay, folks, thanks so much for your patience there. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your patience. Um, just as we anticipated that uh, the virtual learning gets a little bit messy, we are having some issues with the breakout rooms right now. Um, but what I wanted to do while we're just reconfiguring those is just hear from a few of the participants based on your, your sense of uh, what personal success looks like for you. So if someone wouldn't mind sharing with the group, what is it that you define as success for this program? Feel free to unmute yourself and share with the group. Can I go? Yeah, please. It's like, hi, my name is Salim and I'm a freshman. I think like my personal success for this program is to achieve the listed goals and be able to apply the like the things that we will like we will learn in real life stimulus. That's like the most important thing. And like getting to meet new people is like also awesome for a freshman. So yeah, that's that's why I joined the program. Like these are my goals for it. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so it sounds like a lot about the application beyond uh, just this program and finding ways to practice effective teamwork, but also to meet some people and make some connections. That's great. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would be willing to share? I guess I can say a few words. Um, I'm Ben. I'm also a freshman. I think for me, it's learning better the true meaning of working as a team. Um, I've worked in many teams as well, but a lot of them just hasn't really turned out and there's been a lot of like bickering and everything like that. So I think learning better like how to, how a team works and what parts play into the a successful team would really help, but also applying it into the work world as well because I'm starting to get jobs and everything like that. So. I think that applying that on a more personal level, but also on a broader level could help me and be successful. Thanks so much, Ben. Yeah, thinking about your future is important. I mean, we're gonna hear from our uh, Gettysburg alums just how important teamwork is in the industries of athletics, uh, in tech, uh, consulting, and then also in the healthcare field. So we're gonna hear that. 
Well, what I also heard there that you said is around, you've had some bad experiences with teams. I think I would, I'm going out on a limb here, but I assume that we've all um, had some kind of uh, bad experience with a team in some way, right? So um, I, I certainly hear you there, Ben. Great, thanks for sharing. Let's have two more responses uh, just from folks. How, how are you thinking about success in this program for you? Uh, personally, I define my success as coming out of this program with uh, at least one thing, one piece of either knowledge, information, or advice uh, that I didn't have before. Great. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah, so... So having some new insights coming out from this experience, the things that um, you haven't heard bef before or, or maybe you want to reaffirm a little bit. Great, thank you. Let's have one, one more response from the group. I would list it as creating a, uh, like finding a way to create a team that works together, finding a way to incorporate everyone in some way. Uh, so avoiding the sycophants mentality of one person leads and everyone else just follows along with what they say, or having two people just constantly going back and forth, having very different ideas. So finding a way for people to all work together and come to an agreement or compromise rather than one person calling all the shots or two people bickering over every single shot. That's great, Alex. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing there. I think that that idea of you know, not getting caught in the trap of things that, that we know don't work well in teams and, and being able to practice that through the simulation, I think is gonna be really good. Okay. Well, hey, thank you all so much uh, for sharing that. Um, I think this th that's really important for us that we have a good sense of what matters most to you um, in this particular uh, program so that um, you can get the, get the most out of this experience. Um, what, I, what I thought I'd do now, um, again, before we go into the breakout sessions, which we'll do in just a couple minutes, is talk a little bit about um, session three, which is our, um, our virtual uh, simulation. Because I think that's the centerpiece of the program. I think that's gonna be something that um, is important for you to, uh, to take a look at. So I'm just gonna present a couple more slides here and then we'll, we'll go into the breakout. Um, you know, this, uh, let me preface it by saying this, the virtual simulation is actually something that is used in a majority of MBA schools. So graduate students who are pursuing a master's of business administration um, typically use this, this product. And so I, I feel like this is a really good benefit that as an undergraduates that you're able to have this, this type of experience. Um, so let me, let me um, talk a little bit about this simulation here. Um, so what we're going to do at the end of the session is give you a link to be able to um, have access to the tutorial. And the tutorial is going to guide you through these steps. So if, if you have questions coming out of what I'm about to present, um, that's okay. You're going to actually see these same slides. Um, so you'll be able to go back All and get right, well. this information. Um, so once you get the link, you're actually going to log in to um, the Harvard Business Education website, and you're going to create an account, and then it's going to display this, uh, this team. And at the bottom here is a video, which we're going to show a bit later to give, give you a sense of what that looks like. Um, and the tutorial is going to walk you through a number of um, uh, different pieces here. But ultimately, this is a team simulation. So it's where you, as well as a group of four other people, your ultimate goal is to climb uh, and ascend to the top of Mount Everest. Okay, that, that, is, that is your goal. And as part of the simulation, there is six different rounds. And each round is allocated to a specific day. Um, 
Now, it only takes five days to get through all of the camps from base camp all the way up to the, the top. And so in the simulation, there's gonna be a decision that you as a team make to stay at one camp as opposed to moving on. Okay, so that's part of the decision that you're gonna to need to make there. Um, and the, the, the other thing to note is that you will not need to worry about coming back down the, the mountain. It's just purely about ascending. When you log into the simulation, you're gonna have a lot of tools in your dashboard. And one of which is the Everest map here. So you can see um, just off to the right of the screen, the list of all the different base camps here. And each round, will, you'll make a decision of whether or not to proceed as a team to that, that particular camp. Uh, what's also um, important about the simulation is that each of you will play an individual role. So there's the role of the leader, the physician, photographer, the marathoner, and the environmentalist. So, um, you know, over the next couple of sessions, you and your team will have to decide who's going to play what particular role. And each, each role gets um, a specific set of goals that, um, that they'll be working towards and um, certainly different bits of information there. So uh, in summary, each of you will choose a role. Um, you'll have access through this dashboard, through the portal to uh, goals, hiking speed, weather, health, and all of that information will shift as each round goes or e as each day passes. The team is given time to discuss at the end, will you as a team move on to the next camp? And that's something you decide individually and as a group. But also know that much like uh, dynamic environments in Everest, which is the one of the most dynamic environments in the world, there's gonna be additional challenges that come your way from base camp all the way up to the top. So that's um, a, a quick overview of the simulation. Uh, and I'll stop sharing there. I just wondered, are there, are there any initial questions about the simulation, which we're gonna be doing in session three? Um, like you said that the game takes six days to be completed. So like, are we are we gonna start all, all of this on the third session? That's correct, Salim. So, it, so we're going to, the entire simulation um, takes under 90 minutes. So each, each day, um, you know, lasts around 15, uh, around 15 minutes. So we're, we're going to talk more about that when we get into session three. Um, but that, that's, we'll be able to fit all of this simulation in, in the third session. A good question. Well, Thank I've you. just got, yes, you're welcome. I've, uh, if you have other questions, which I know you have, we're going to have time to get into that in a little bit in session two, but I have heard that our breakout rooms are ready. So, um, uh, Abby, can I turn it over to you to introduce our, uh, our breakout group here? Sure. So we have a couple different parts to what we're going to ask you to do. Um, first, we're going to ask you to go over some quick introductions, and we have a little question for you to talk about with each other that I'll put in the chat for you guys. You can see it in your breakout rooms. Um, and this question is, what is one thing you would bring with you to the summit of Mount Everest besides your basic supplies? Just a little thing to think about. Um, and besides that, I am also going to give you guys a little bit of an assignment as a team. So um, after you guys kind of introduce yourselves to each other and kind of get to know each other a little bit, we're going to ask you, if you don't already have one, to come up with a team name um, that you'll all kind of come up with together. Uh, and we're also going to ask you to fill out a Google slide introducing yourselves as a team. Um, and on that slide, we also would like you to decide on three values that will determine how you will operate as a team uh, and state your overall purpose beyond just summiting Mount Everest. Um, I know that's kind of a lot. I will try to write all of that in the chat for you. Um, and also the link we already sent out earlier, but I'll send that out again so that you can see where we want you to go. And Abby, just to clarify, so we're gonna, 
be doing um, all of that in this breakout. So how, how long do you think we want to give them? Is that about, uh, about 20, 15 to 20 minutes? Somewhere in there sounds, sounds about right. Okay. So yeah, we do have a lot of things to get through here. Okay. Is that okay with you there, Paul? Okay. Great. So yeah, so there's the link to the slides that we're going to ask you to use to um, basically put all the information we're asking you for. And let me just type up in chat all the information. So team name, the values, how your team Thanks, Abby. operate, um, and team's overall purpose are the main things we want you guys to think about. And yeah, include all of that information on those slides, as well as your names. Um, since we did do some team shuffling around, so you might have to kind of edit the names that are on your team as well. Thanks, Abby. And I, I did want to reiterate, so due to some of our technical challenges, we have to have to reshuffle the teams. And so um, you may see a different group of, of folks in your breakout that uh, is different from the slide, but just go with the group of folks who you are in your breakout with. Okay, so thanks thanks so much for your patience. And um, I, Paul, I think we're ready to go. Yep, I'm about to send you all to your breakout rooms. You'll notice that some rooms only have four, so you may get an additional person that wasn't able to join us today. So get excited for that mystery teammate. Um, we'll make sure they know who you are and that you know who they are. Um, make sure to click on Abby's link to that Google slide because the chat may go away depending on what platform you're using for this Zoom call. Um, so to make sure you don't lose that PowerPoint, go ahead and click on that link now in the chat so you can have it. Um, and then when you're ready, I'm going to open the breakout rooms and you can uh, head on out. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back, climbers. It is great to see you all. Um, it was awesome to see so much activity in uh, the Google Slides there. It seems like you are well on your way to articulating your purpose and your values. But I'd, I'd like to take a moment as a whole group here to just debrief that experience. Because for most of you, this is perhaps the first time you've met some of your team members. Maybe it's uh, you know, certainly your first experience together. So I'd love to just check in to see what that experience was like. So I have a couple of questions for you. So what was your, t tell me a little bit about what happened in the breakout when you first arrived. Describe to me what, what happened initially. Uh, I feel like we kind of had a very uh, decent connection when we first came in. Uh, we all got in, we introduced ourselves and we uh, all seemed to be very like-minded uh, individuals who, you know, just, want to not only like obviously get to the top of the mountain but we all want to like self-improve and such and we all seem to get along and overall i think we're quite uh, we're quite optimistic about um how this uh, session is going to go great thanks gabe so it sounded like you were off to a great start with your team and, and did i hear you right in, in terms of um had similar goals for the participation in that program like basically just like we all really want to like get better at this whole leadership thing and getting uh, better at working with others. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Gabe. What about from another group? Tell me a little bit about what was the, the first uh, few moments like in your group experience there? Similar to what Gabe said, we all introduced ourselves, um, majors year, and we have all four years, which is really cool. And I think we're all hesitant at first, but then we all got to know each other and everyone was pretty chill with each other, which was great. Okay, great. So a good, a good start there too. Tell me a little, oh, sorry, was someone going to say something? Yeah, I was uh, just going to say, you know, we did the typical introduction and then we kind of, you know, talked about what we thought the purpose was and we all kind of I know with like just hearing long trips and stuff like that it seems like everyone's kind of got their head in the right place about what we need to accomplish but also not losing ourselves on the journey yeah okay great I'm, I'm curious so we asked you to to discuss some pretty foundational components of a team right the core values and values are 
are guideposts for how to make decisions, how to, to, to really identify with your team and also your, your core purpose. But here you have five, four or five different individuals with different perspectives. How did you go about making that group decision? Talk to me a little bit about your, your conversation and your decision-making process to, to put that on the slide at the end. I think that like once we started like just talking and getting to know each other, it like just kind of gelled into a good way of like, you know, like what are we like thinking and like what are we doing? And like um in my group, at least we were like talking, we were having fun, you know, like getting to know each other with the basics and like talking about where we live and like what we do on campus and um stuff. And I think that our overall purpose that we kind of reach is just to have fun. You know, like we're just like here we like wanna do, like we obviously want to ascend to like the top of the summit and reach our highest like peak and like make all our goals but like at the end of the day like we would rather like not reach the summit if like you know we were sitting there arguing like getting in like disagreements like we'd rather like not make it and be like you know what at least we had fun like we made friends out of it and so on that's great and and peter how did you sort of reveal that as a group or come to that sense that fun was sort of your core, your core value. Is that something that each of you shared or how, how did you come to agreement on that? Yeah, so we were, we were just talking and, you know, like we were just like hit it off really well and we all started like laughing and stuff like that. And I think that obviously right now with the way that things are and times being tough, like, and everyone trying to stay home and not see as many people as they can, uh, you know, it was like nice to have like an interaction with people that you like, don't necessarily know but like you share similar experiences with on campus so like when we were like coming together and being like oh like you know why are we doing this obviously there's a component that everyone is here for you know like gaining leadership experience like trying to work on your team building activities but overall it's just something to do because like most of us would either be like you know on our phone like scrolling through like instagram or something like that playing video games like you know or like doing nothing so like it, this j term opportunity in itself like Give you something to do and it's something that's fun and like you get to meet people while bettering yourself wonderful that's that's great to hear to put put it in that perspective of these times absolutely let's hear from a, a, another group how did you go about your decision making process there to identify the goals and the values um, my group sort of focused more on the responsibility side of things uh, in that we all felt that you know were this a real situation where were we in reality climbing uh mount everest um then it would be uh pretty much imperative that everybody do their part because if something happens to one person it happens to everybody and it's an extremely dangerous thing to do and uh, i think we all kind of recognize that out of the gate um and so we focused a lot on on like equal footing responsibility and respect that's great nicholas so what, what i heard in that is is understanding the task ahead of you and what it might require from each team member for you to be successful which is about responsibility and and commitment there yeah that's that's certainly some good points there well good well what i want you to do is as a team is to continue to come back to this slide you know, when you think about you're faced with some, some, uh, some tough decisions in the simulation, um, and as you're forming your group, you know, th this could be a good guideline for you as you go about uh, the next part of the program. Um, feel free if you need to come back and have more conversations about your values and your purpose, we certainly encourage that. But this will be a good, a good foundation from which you can build as a, as a team. What we're going to do now is actually go back into the breakouts and Abby has another uh, activity for you uh, that I think will, will help us dive a little bit deeper into uh, what it means to be a part of a team. So uh, I believe, I think Ben, you mentioned this earlier about having some bad teamwork experiences in the past. So this activity is kind of really going to encourage everyone to think about how bad experiences you've had in the past continue to kind of uh, in, in influence the way that you think about teamwork in general. 
Uh, this will kind of help us all just become aware of biases that we have regarding teamwork. So that way, when you're making decisions about your team and interacting with your team members, you kind of know um, how your past experiences are influencing the way that you're approaching this team. And also, we'll have some discussions afterwards, after this breakout room, um, to kind of debrief and talk about um, what all of this means in terms of how we can avoid repeating the same mistakes and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to put in the chat the questions that we want you to um, think about in the breakout room here. So basically, we're just going to ask you to describe a bad teamwork experience that you've had in the past, and then think about how that's impacted your perceptions of teamwork in general. So you're going to go back to the same teams that you were just working with, and then each of you can kind of share your teamwork experience and maybe talk a little bit as a group about you know, how that's impacted your perceptions of teamwork and how you can learn from that with this team. All right, we're gonna give you 10 minutes. Uh, so please accept the breakout room. We'll see you in a bit. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Okay, welcome, welcome back folks. Um, you know, I'm typically a very optimistic person, uh, but in this, session, I want to hear uh, some of the, the worst experiences that you've had here, just just to, to name it for the group. Um, I think oftentimes in working with both leadership and teams, we can learn from things that uh, are not always positive or not always effective. So I'd, I'd love to hear one or two examples uh, of, of bad team experiences so this this whole the whole group can learn from this particular moment so is there anyone from from a group that would be willing to share uh, one of the worst experiences that you heard yeah Kat I see your hand up there um one experience that uh, me and a few group members shared was having either a coach or um like a leader on the team whether it's a captain or just a peer be um kind of abusive of their power and their influence. And we said that in a way it almost made us less motivated to work for the team and be cooperative. And um, it was just a really bad experience that we don't want to have again. Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that, that sounds like one of the worst for sure. To have, yeah, to have a leader who abuses power and does not, um, not meet expectations of what you would think of a, of a compassionate leader. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, thanks for sharing that, that example there. Is there, is there another example from the group? Uh, I could say one. Uh, for our group, uh, I talked about, and it's like, it's easy to relate it to sports. Uh, like back in high school, I played soccer and uh, like it was the championship match and like we had, like we were just so psyched to win it that we didn't really come up with like a common goal, like win it. We were just like, you know, all trying to like take the ball and like try to score. And it didn't end up working out in our favor because there was just not enough teamwork and like too, everybody was too into themselves. And I think one thing that we could apply that to this is like to just have the same goal uh, to talk it out, to delegate it more, uh, to be like a team player. And like, like everybody wants to reach the summit, but like if you don't reach the summit, like it's okay. As long as you guys are just not reaching the summit together. Like that's just what my belief is on it. Wonderful. Thanks, Matthew. So yeah, so the dynamic between individual goals and team goals there and how when everyone has that individual goal, that can be a challenge. Well, sure, that's that's a great example. Well, uh, Paul, if you wouldn't mind um, showing the slides here, we've got a couple more things we wanted to talk through. And um, the, the final thing we wanted you to do individually is just based on the conversation you had in your breakout room, hearing some of those stories of some of the, the, the bad experiences, um, just jot down, just take a minute or so um, you know, what are one or two themes about ineffective teamwork that you'd like to work on or, or try to avoid in uh, this particular program? So just, just take a few moments to, to jot that down as we, as we enter the close here. Um, because 
I think it's going to be helpful for you to, to be able to focus on something for you individually that you want to bring to the group or you want to avoid with the group. So jot that down and keep, keep it somewhere where you can revisit it for our session next week and, and certainly, certainly in the simulation. Well, as we, as we come to a close here, I wanted to give you a sense of what are some of the, the, the next steps here. So um, Paul, if you could go to the next slide here. Um, shortly after this call, you will get uh, um, emailed a link, uh, or actually it's probably something we could put in the chat, right, Addy? That's something we could do there. And this link is going to be um, a link to a website uh, through the um, Harvard University. And it is going to ask you to um, actually create a username and password to log into the portal to access the simulation. Now, it's a, a pretty simple process. It's going to ask you for some, some strange questions, like whether you're a part-time or full-time person or what's the name of the course. Don't worry so much about that. Just select whatever you think is best. But ultimately, that's going to give you um, access to, to the portal, which uh, we're, we're going to need to have um, moving forward, because that's something we'll talk about next week. So that will be one thing that, that we'll ask you to do um, when, we, uh, when we break here. The other thing is um, I talked about five different roles that uh, you will play uh, or each member will play. Um, and we'll make sure to send this slide deck to you so you can go back and look at that. But we want you to think about what, what is the role that you would like to play and, and how, as a group, are you going to come to the decision on those roles? And then also, we would like for you to stay in contact with your team in between sessions. So, um, you know, if you could find a way to uh, really be your preferred method of communication, I think that's, that's going to be important as, as we uh, engage in the rest of the program. So those are a few things of what's next. Let me take a few more minutes to talk about the, um, the next session because we're really excited to present to you some of our alums. So we have four alums who are gonna join us for a conversation on the key question of how to build effective teams. And what we wanted to do is recruit a group of folks from lots of different industries. So we have um, our very own Coach Cantelli, who's an alum of the college from the class of 1983, and she's the assistant athletic director, but also a women's lacrosse coach. She uh, has actually won a national championship at least three times, from what I understand, and certainly is about successful teams, but she'll be the first to tell you uh, that success is a result, not necessarily the goal. And then we also have an alum who's in the healthcare industry, Dave Gilmore, who's class of 19, uh, 2013, and is a, a, a PA uh, here locally in Pennsylvania. Our two other alums are Meg Roya and Sal Samir Lavani. Um, Meg is a consultant at Deloitte and uh, part of her responsibilities is to be on a different project team every six, uh, every six months. So um, she has a lot of personal experience in helping the healthcare and business industry and then Samir is in, um, you know, working at Salesforce in cybersecurity and uh, certainly works in lots of different team settings there. So those are our, our panelists. Uh, they've, they are all really personable. So, you know, don't be shy about looking them up on LinkedIn or saying hello if that's something you want to do in advance, but you'll get a chance to meet them uh, next week. So that uh, really concludes our program. We wanted to do one final reflection here, which is just a one word, and we would like you to put it in the chat. Um, but based on your experience tonight, you know, what is one word which describes your experience thus far? So if you just take a few moments, pop that one word in the chat. And once you have done that, uh, the, the program for tonight officially concludes and we will we'll see you back on this Zoom link uh, on Thursday at, uh, at four o'clock. And the facilitators, we can hang around for a little bit if you, uh, if you want to stay on, if you have any specific questions, but go ahead and put that in the chat and uh, thank you all very much. We wish you uh, a safe and happy evening and looking forward to seeing you on Thursday.